when secretions obstruct the airway, they'll set off the high pressure alarm. To correct or prevent this, suction the patient whenever you see secretions in the ventilator tubing or endotracheal tube, or if you hear crackles or wheezes when auscultating breath sounds. Several acceptable methods for suctioning are currently in use. Check your hospital's procedure manual before proceeding. To suction the patient, you may do either of the following. Take the patient off the ventilator and manually ventilate her before and after the procedure. Or if you use a closed suction system, as we're doing here, you may leave the patient on the ventilator and ventilate her by adjusting the ventilator settings. Hyperoxygenate and hyperinflate the patient before suctioning. Do this by providing 100% oxygen and a tidal volume equal to one and one half times the patient's ordered tidal volume. While you're allowing time for the ventilator setting adjustments to occur, prepare the suctioning equipment if necessary. As always, explain the procedure to the patient and offer reassurance. If her secretions look thick, you may want to instill a few milliliters of preservative-free normal saline solution into her endotracheal tube before suctioning. However, current studies show this procedure has little or no benefit. Just before suctioning, deliver three to five ventilator breaths by pressing the sigh button. Synchronize these breaths with the patient's breaths. Then suction the patient. When suctioning, never allow the catheter to remain in the airway for more than 10 seconds. To remind yourself of the time limit, count off the seconds as you suction the patient. While suctioning, observe the cardiac monitor for changes in the patient's heart rate, such as bradycardia or tachycardia, or changes in her heart's rhythm, such as frequent PVCs. If any changes develop, Stop suctioning and place the patient back on the ventilator or manually ventilate her for a few minutes. During suctioning, also observe the patient's skin color and level of consciousness for any changes. If she has pulse oximetry or SVO2 or CO2 monitoring in place, watch the monitor for any significant changes. After suctioning, remove the catheter and deliver three to five ventilator breaths. Clear the catheter and repeat the procedure as needed to clear the patient's airway. When that's done, suction any secretions remaining in the patient's mouth. If the ventilator requires it, readjust the ventilator settings and reset the alarms. Then auscultate the patient's lungs. Make sure the patient's call bell is within her reach before leaving her bedside. If you see that the ventilator tubing is kinked, unkink it. To prevent it from kinking again, position the jointed support device so that it keeps the tubing stretched out and the weight off the endotracheal tube. Also avoid catching the tubing in the side rails or rolling the patient onto it. Keep the tubing in clear view so you can spot kinks immediately. If you see that the endotracheal tube is kinked, unkink it. To prevent endotracheal tube kinks, make sure the tube's properly positioned and is securely taped or anchored. Note the tube's correct position by reading the number or centimeter marking on the side of the tube that's closest to the patient's lips. If a nasal tube was inserted, read the number closest to the patient's nares. Document this information. If you see the patient with an oral endotracheal tube biting the tube, Place a shortened oral airway or a bite block in the patient's mouth. If this is impossible, consult the physician for possible nasotracheal intubation. 
If water accumulates in the ventilator tubing and it's not equipped with an inline water trap or closed circuit drainage system, disconnect the tubing at the point nearest the patient and quickly empty the water into a collection container. Never add the water to the humidifier because it could contaminate the humidifier water. When the tubing is empty, quickly reconnect it to the ventilator. If you see the patient fighting or bucking the ventilator's attempt to cycle properly, carefully and thoroughly assess her to find out the reason. Several problems may cause this. If you suspect anxiety, assess your patient as the anxiety may be from hypoxemia. Notify the physician immediately if this is the case. Depending on the patient's condition, you may need to manually ventilate her. This will also help to temporarily synchronize her respiratory pattern. If you suspect the patient is just frightened, reassure her and help her relax. To do this, use positive facial expressions and body language to communicate your acceptance of her and her condition. If appropriate, teach her breathing patterns to use with the ventilator. If she knows what to do, she's less likely to panic. Also, make sure the patient's call bell is always within her reach. If the patient remains anxious, ask the physician to prescribe a sedative, unless, of course, the patient is being weaned, making sedation inappropriate. Pain or discomfort can also cause the patient to fight the ventilator. Assess the reason and, if possible, correct it. If the patient is in pain, you may need to medicate her. If her position makes her uncomfortable, reposition her. In some cases, the endotracheal tube may cause discomfort. To correct this, obtain an order for a local anesthetic throat spray that you can apply as needed. If the ventilator tubing is the problem, place small pillows or towels underneath it to maintain the proper position. Try to avoid tugging or pulling on either tube. Positioning the support arm correctly will help. If you're unsure why the patient is fighting the ventilator, 